All right, the first knot that we're gonna talk about in our loops is my most common loop that I'll tie, which is the bowline. And it's bowline, B-O-W-L-I-N. And how we tie that is you put a turn in it, and you know which way the turn is, you remember it is the standing end going away from the knot is on the bottom. So the working end is on the top. And then there's a rhyme with this knot, which is the rabbit comes, goes through the hole, around the tree, and back into the hole. And there's a lot of variations on how to tie this one-handed and so on and so forth. Um, but that's the basis to it. We'll show you one more time. Put your turn in the rope. Standing end or uh, standing end is on the bottom. We come up through the loop. We go around the back of the standing line and then back into the hole where we started. And then you pull that tight. And that's a bowline. And it's a very strong knot. It's one of the strongest. It will capsize if you do not tend it correctly. If you don't push all these loops to where they're nice and snug and then set that knot real good and then test it. But because all, all ropes are different, this, this one works on most every, every rope. Stiff ropes, you really have to tend them good. So you have to slowly, when you're testing them, slowly give your load to the, to the rope and make sure you're pushing down these little rounds. When you want to break this knot, it's the back of the knot. It's this, where the loop comes around, the very top loop that comes around the line. You push that like that, and that, that's how you break it. The next knot in the end loops is if you have a slippery rope and it likes to capsize knots and you want to tie the bowline, you're going to tie that. It's called a double bowline. And what you do is you make two loops exactly the same. So like this, where both of the lines going away from the loop are on the bottom, on the bottom, and then you take the one that's in front and stack it on top. So it makes one loop. And then you tie as normal. You come up from the bottom of the loop, come through the loop, rabbit comes out of the hole, goes around the standing line or around the tree, and back into the hole. And that's called a double bowling or a water bowling. It's also referenced as. And this does not tie real good with stiff lines. It um you really have to tend it hard if you have a if you have a big stiff like an inch or heavy duty twisted braid line you really have to put some maybe even have a tool with you to to lock this down on heavier lines but any other line it works great and that is the double bowling or the water bowling all right the next bowling we're going to talk about is a running bowling and it's basically a bowling that is in slip knot form so we take and make a loop around the line, then we're gonna tie the bowl in here. So, we do all the same criteria, just make a loop, and we come up through the loop, 
around the standing end, back into the loop, and then cinch that down. Now essentially we have this loop that's riding, this bowline that's riding around itself so it can cinch down and be a slip knot. And this is what we use to lower limbs down in the tree world, um, bind to any post or tree, so it's a very valuable knot. All right, the next knot we're going to talk about is bowline and bite. So that means you're going to tie a bowline in the middle of the line using a bite. The way I like to do this is when I take a bite like this, put a loop in right here. So it looks like that. Okay. And then take this and come up through here. Up through. Then you take this loop and you flip it down over everything. Flip it all the way around back so it comes up behind it. And that's what you cinch down. And that is a. Let me tend this so it looks right. And that's a bowling in bite. We should have two loops, two loops circling around the final loop, and then that single loop that you flipped out from underneath of it. Okay, another bowling that I tie is when you're towing a car out, or I'm usually towing a tree down, and I need to tie the bowling in the middle of the line with a big loop going around a hitch of a truck usually. So for this example, this line is going out to the tree and it's tied off. And then it comes back and I hook it around a hitch. Let's use this for a representative going around my hitch. And then this tail is really long. This is the rest of the standing end that's coming off of this. Just for example, we don't have it that way. So I can tie it on camera. So what you do is you come back around, you keep pulling your, pull a bite out of the line like this. You make your normal turn, then you use that bite to tie the bowline. Come up through it, go around behind it, and then back into the hole. Now, make sure you leave a nice big loop because this is the this is the tail. Okay, make sure you leave a really nice size long loop over here. Okay. Now, if you think this knot is going to be jammed so tight you can't get it out, you can always stick something in there behind these loops. I usually use a stick or something, but you put a stick in the middle of it like that. And that stops the knot from jamming. When you get all done, you pull out your jam stick, I like to call it, and then you can undo the knot because there's a big gap where the stick was at and it's not cinched totally down rock solid like it was. So that is a bowling and bite when you're trying to tow something. The next loop we're going to talk about is the figure eight and this knot is a little bit more secure than the the bowling that we just looked at. The figure eight I use for a climbing line that I attach to my harness, so this is a lifeline knot, I consider it. And it's very easy to tie. You take a nice bite out of the out of the line. Make a loop. And go under that, under it. Back over. And then tilt this up and come 
up underneath and out. I'll tie it one more time. Going under, over the top of the standing line, and then up underneath of this through here. Like that. And this is an extremely strong knot. The only disadvantage to this knot is under heavy loads, this knot will jam and it'll be very hard to break. You're gonna to need to have a tool to break it. If it's under extreme load, you might have to cut it. I've cut one line, so. But it's a very solid lot knot and people will put another uh, safety knot up here, put a double overhand on this line, on this line here. So, that is the figure eight knot in bite. Okay, the next knot we're gonna tie is a figure eight in the end of the line. You don't have the ability to put the loop over top of the item. You have to actually sew it through, like this is a carabiner, but let's just say this is a fixed ring and we have to sew it through and then tie a figure eight. So what you do in this end, you tie a figure eight in the middle of the line. Okay, just like that. Then you go through whatever ring that you want. Carabiner in this case is what we're doing. Then you trace the exact path parallel to what this figure eight is. So we follow this rope in, we come in right next to that rope. Okay, make the loop the right size and then you just keep following that figure eight and when you cinch it down the one thing that you want to tend this knot if you see right here, this part is crossing. You want all these to be parallel. So I usually start on the edge and I follow it around. Is it parallel? Parallel? Oh, it's crossing right there. So we move this whole line over and under. Follow it around. Parallel, parallel, parallel and out. And then we cinch it down. Yeah, tend this knot really good. And then there it is. We start in here, they're parallel. They come out, they're parallel, parallel, all the way around, into here, out around here, and and out, this, out the end. And that is a tended figure eight knot tied in the end of the line. If you want more security, you put a overhand stopper right above it. This is what a lot of mountain climbers, tree climbers, most every climber climbs on one of their lifelines is going to be a figure eight with a attended overhand or double overhanded knot right here. This knot does jam really hard, so you're going to need tools to unbreak this if you're going to use it under uh, a lot of load. So that's the figure eight tied in the end of the line. The next knot we're going to talk about is the uni knot and this is a loop that I tie in my fishing line to attach a hook or a lure and to tie a snelling knot which is tying over the shank of the hook. I also use this to tie two lines together so I use it as a, uh, a bend, two fishing lines. So this is basically my sole fishing line unless I wanted to tie a loop in the middle of a fishing line which I use a Doppler loop and we're going to go over that later. But the uni, the uni knot or the Duncan knot 
is the one that I go to and I don't tie any other fishing knots except the Doppler. So this is the loop where I'm going to tie off to my lure. The carabiner is going to represent that. We come over the top and then we start coiling it inside this loop as we would some type of hitch. If you're using monofilament, I would recommend um, five or five to eight turns. If you're using braided line, because this will also work on braided line, put 10 turns in there. And if you really want to make sure that you're, uh, it's going to set, because some of those new braided lines are really slick, you, um, I would just tie it to something and put a toggle so you can pull and see really how much it's going to take. And then you can just put another, if it starts to capsize, if it does capsize, then just put a few more turns on it until it stops capsizing because it will eventually stop capsizing. And then you cinch it down. It's basically a slip knot at that point. And it cinches right down onto the lure. Or another line. This is, imagine this being another line here tied in and they, that's how I join two lines together. Same knot. You can also tie that running back to itself so it makes a loop like that. It cannot be tied in slippery fashion. That is the uni knot or the Duncan knot.